Hey guys, and welcome to the Fish Room. I'm Rachel O'Leary, and it's time for a Tuesday tip. I had some requests to do more live food cultures, so I thought I would do micro worms, which are extremely tiny. I'll show you that in a minute. They're also not my favorite culture, and that's for the simple reason that they smell so bad. But you can prevent that by maintaining your cultures properly. So there's a lot of different uh, mediums that people use for microworm cultures. Oatmeal, baby cereal, boiled, sweet, boiled and mashed sweet potatoes, all different kinds of things. But what I like to use is the heels of the bread because my kids never eat them and why waste it? So what I do is I take the sort of stale hard bread and a small container. You can use a Tupperware like this one. I had this laying around so I'm using it. Margarine tubs work well. And I just press the bread into the bottom. I'm going to use two pieces because I had it. And then you add enough water so that it's pretty moist. Not, not like soaking, wringing wet but pretty moist. The bread should absorb most of it, or if you're using baby cereal, you want it to be like a slurry as opposed to a paste. Do that. Um, you're gonna poke some holes in your lid to allow for air circulation. Now, microworms are really valuable for a lot of the species I keep because they're absolutely tiny. And it's, so it's a good idea to have a culture of these around. Um, they're also really, really great for feeding fry. They're substantially smaller than white worms. And a lot of the, the fish that I deal in, especially some of the wild ones, have a pretty strong prey drive. So again, live foods are really important. I think especially with wild fish, it can really help bolster their immunity upon import if you feed live for at least the first couple weeks. So I've just gone ahead and put holes all around the edge. And then this culture really isn't overdone. Um, it's, it's actually quite booming. This one was done with oatmeal. What I'm going to do is just take a spoonful of the culture from the top. Since it doesn't need to be completely redone, I'm just starting a second one going to skim off the surface and you can tell that the culture is live and active because when you look at the surface it has like a shimmery sheen to it and I'll get a close-up for you but the worms crawl up the edge and that's how you know it's ready to be used for feeding so after you put your culture on top of your media you're going to just take some um, activated yeast sprinkle it along the top. Just a small sprinkling and I'll get a close up of this for you too. And that just accelerates the growth of the worms and makes the culture ready quicker. Um, so in about three days this culture will have that shimmery look to the surface and the worms will start climbing the sides and it's ready to be fed. The easiest way to feed these worms is by using a small paintbrush and just taking it along the edge of the culture where they're climbing the sides and then dipping it in the water or dipping it into some dechlorinated water and then using a turkey baster. Sometimes I just use my finger but that's pretty gross. Um, so it's really it's really pretty simple and you know as I mentioned earlier the most important thing with these cultures is do not forget about them. The, the yeasty smell is strong while they're fresh, but if you forget about it and don't reculture it before it dies, it is like rotten death. It is just terrible. Now, unlike white worms, this culture is a little bit more tolerant of warmer temperatures, so it does just fine in a fish room. You can see the about inch line above the base of the culture that is the worms climbing up the side showing you that it's ready to be fed. You can tell that it's a live and active culture because it gets a shimmering appearance to the surface. Again, this one was cultured with oatmeal, but any sort of baby cereal or mashed 
soft vegetable or bread will work. And this is the culture that I made. I just, again, moistened the bread, added a big healthy spoonful of the live worms and sprinkled it with some yeast. I like to always keep at least two cultures going so that if one should die unexpectedly, I have a backup. And this one should be ready in about four or five days. Generally, I redo these cultures every couple of weeks. You can tell when the worms stop crawling up the sides as readily that it's time to make sure you redo it. Hope that helps. Make sure you stop by my Facebook page as well as my website, MsJinx.com, for my upcoming speaking engagements, my current stock list, and information on all things nano. Don't forget to subscribe so you don't miss my Tuesday tips and my Sunday species spotlights.